Yeah, coming up next, we have one of our neurosurgeons here at Norton Healthcare. Hi, how are you? Doctor today? David Sun, good Hi. to see you very much. Doctor Sun, welcome, you. welcome Thanks back. And we're talking specifically in this case about brain tumors. Um, tell us about brain tumors and what are the symptoms. Um, you know, first of all, brain tumors aren't very common mm -hmm. tumors. That's the first thing people should realize. But uh, they do present. People do have brain tumors. The common presentation of brain tumors would probably be things like headache. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to be careful with that one because headaches are very, very common. Right. And so I don't want every single person out there that has a headache to suddenly think, oh my gosh, I have I've a brain, a brain tumor. tumor. It's really very different. These are headaches that start on and really start to develop over the course of weeks and months and won't go away. They're often associated with, they're worse in the morning, you get better through the course of the day. They're very different than the kind of headaches people have with migraines and oh. things like that. Another common kind of presentation is um, yeah. seizures, mm -hmm. where the brain is irritated by the tumor and that leads to a seizure but really what we really see more than anything is people come in thinking they've had a stroke so they come in that something's not right family member sees them and says I'm, I'm concerned you're having a stroke they do the right thing they call the ambulance they get to the hospital ASAP so that they can be treated for a stroke and lo and behold we do our studies and, and it's a brain tumor so it seems that headaches are more a symptom of a brain tumor what what actually causes brain tumors well that's the million dollar yep. question really with all of our cancers or tumors what I tell people is not all brain tumors are cancer, right. first of all. Okay, uh, A tumor of any kind is a massive tissue that's growing someplace it's not supposed to be. So I tell people, well, you got a wart on your finger. As far as I'm concerned, that's a tumor. Okay, Tumors are basically called because somewhere at some point in time, the um, instructions that each of those cells has to do what it's supposed to do get misrepresented. We call that a mutation. Okay, So people who smoke can get lung cancer. They get tumors in their lungs. So there are a lot of different ways you can get tumors. Um, so, you know, it's a million dollar question. We don't completely understand. Now, there are a lot of things that don't cause brain tumors. Head injuries don't cause brain tumors. I get that question all the time. I hit my head. Did that cause me to have a brain tumors? Everybody asks about cell phones. Right. And that's a big controversial question. There are a lot of neurosurgeons that will tell you, look, I don't think they cause brain tumors, but there are some out there that say that they do. Right now, the majority of the data tells us that we don't think that cell phones cause brain tumors. But we've only had cell phones really active that all of us are carrying around all the time for 10, 15 years, not even that long. So I think really the data is still out. Um, how common is it that you would operate to remove a brain tumor? Is that how um, how often is that a successful way to remove the tumor? So there are, there are really three ways that I think of that we treat brain tumors. Mm -hmm. The first is just surveillance. If you have if we get an MRI, which is a, a high quality picture of the brain that shows a brain tumor, um, it may be a benign tumor, meaning it's not malignant, it's not cancerous, and if it's not causing you problems, I tell my patients if it's not bothering you, let Let's not bother it and let's just keep an eye on it. So we'll get an MRI six months later, we'll get an MRI a year later. There are a lot of people that go their entire lives with the brain tumor, it's not causing any problems and we just watch it, so that's surveillance. When the tumor starts to grow or the tumor starts to irritate the brain or we think based on the images that it could be a angrier, more aggressive kind of tumor, that's when we have to consider operating. And when we operate on brain tumors, we use a lot of um, really high-end technical equipment to do the operation as safely as possible. I tell all my patients, I've got a Jeep, just like people have GPS in their car now, mm -hmm. I have a global positioning system in the operating room wow. that I use when I do a brain tumor surgery, and the map is the person's MRI scan. So we individually load that person's MRI scan onto each set of, each time we do the operation, and that helps me navigate where I am. And then we use a fancy microscope. We don't do things with our regular eyes. We use really fancy microscopes that allow us to magnify in. What we're doing is we're trying to get out as much of the tumor as we can safely get out and we're trying to get a diagnosis figure out what kind of tumor it is the other kind of treatments that we'll use will be radiation or chemotherapy as needed based on what kind of tumor we're dealing with but we're very grateful that we live in an age with facilities like Norton Brownsboro Hospital with the high-tech equipment to oh, yeah. get take control of these brain tumors and give people back their lives absolutely what we want to do what I tell people is we're trying to control the brain tumor so they can control their lives otherwise the tumor is controlling their lives and that's the last thing that we want well, that is encouraging news. Thank you, Dr. David Sun, for being with us. No Thank you for having me. Thank you, Dr.